I don't, don't download illegal music. Yeah, I download music illegally, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes, my, my dad actually downloads, downloads everything illegally. I don't uh, download music illegally. I have downloaded a couple of albums illegally. Personally, I don't, but members of my family do, and then they give me it. So I download the illegally music. The most music I download illegally I just want to hear if it's good music and then I buy it. No comment. I think the industry that we're in is not necessarily these days a music industry as such. I think it's, if anybody getting into music is going to have to see it from the point of view that this is a media industry now. We don't just make records. If you do creative work, you know, you need to be able to derive an income from it. The only way I, that you make actual money to paint rent or food with now is gigs and events and there's not much money in digital sales. There is money in digital sales for big artists. Um, big artists make their money through tours, so they like charge people lots of money to come see them at concerts. And in terms of smaller artists, still, yeah, it's all about the tour. I mean, most people don't see any back end from the actual CD costs. Shops have to come up with new ideas just like artists have to come up with new ideas and everyone has to come up with new ideas nowadays. And the more things you offer in your shop, the more possibilities you have of one of those things to work. Lots of shops are gone, we all know that. Uh, as you can see here, I'm still like running a record shop and it's possible. But like we said, you cannot just focus on record shop. You have to be open for like merchandise, selling some extra things like bags, headphones, equipment, um, videos, CDs, DVDs, uh, T-shirts, design stuff, uh, and next to that, organizing events, trying to set everything uh, online. If now you choose to just be a vinyl shop, I don't think you make enough to hold up your shop. I think a lot of people, <clears throat> since they only have a thousand files of their favorite artists, actually want to have something, because we're still animals, we're still like holding something in our hands still recorded music on carrier CDs and so on is an important level of income but obviously digital is taking over it's getting more and more important I downloaded my own CD illegally is that, is that a crime? <laughs> my CD is actually online I don't know if somebody put it there and I downloaded it to check if it was right and it was right so I actually downloaded, illegally downloaded my own music it's a crime. Technically, it's a crime. Technically, it's a crime. Well, we're not criminals. No. <laughs> we're just musicians. I think a lot of people, I mean, we're all aware of that. Everyone downloads illegally. Some people still have the respect for artists to go buy their stuff. I think I can understand completely if someone doesn't want to pay a euro for a track and just goes and downloads it illegally. And I can also respect and understand the person that, as a principal, does go pay that one euro because it's so cheap. I mean, why not give it to the artist? What is, for us, important is that the source that people uh, are using is a legitimate source. I actually don't have that much of a problem with illegal downloading. Part of the problem, I think, is actually to step back from the question of, of whether downloading is, is good or bad for the industry um, and kind of address it from the point of view of um, how would you actually define an illegal download these days. Part of the problem with, with um, changing laws is that that's not something that can happen overnight. Changing a law can take months and changing a law can actually, in some cases, take years. And where I think we have a problem at the moment is that technology can change overnight. If people went to a car boot sale or a market to buy illegal CDs, you know, we didn't follow those people home, we didn't take the CDs from them, they were not arrested and they were not sued civilly. 
we went after the traders. Nowadays, in the digital age, the traders are those sites on the internet. I don't want to fight against people downloading my stuff illegally, and I honestly don't look for money in sales. I look for the possibility to travel and to play my music around and eventually eat off of that. I know that there have been situations where even um, even piracy was actually fostered by the industry in the first place. I listen to it on Spotify most of the time. Oh, my mum uh, has got a Spotify account and I usually abuse that. I have used Spotify but not so much recently. I tend to just like go through YouTube. I think, you know, there's a lot of future in streaming. It's really about access and less about owning a copy of People have their, their gadgets, you're, you're online all the time with your phone, iPod, with your laptop, everywhere you go, in the train, people call you, everybody knows where you are, what you're doing. I used to really not be into social media, but I was pushed by my cousin to really get into that and try to get my music out to people. And now I'm really grateful and thankful to social media. And I can see artists that would have never been known, just like me, actually get somewhere and they're able to reach out to people all over the world thanks to social media, thanks to internet. Social media from an industry point of view, I think the industry these days would collapse without it. It's, I, I, I think social media is wonderful. It's, it's, it's a great development. I think it needs to settle down a little bit, and I think it's, it is starting to settle down. How it's going to develop in the future, the Lord knows. I mean, this, social media changes every five minutes. <laughs> So I do think that uh, a lot of music is too expensive. I don't think it should cost as much as it does, on, especially on iTunes. It's quite expensive just for one song. It's a pound in England. Um, so I think maybe it should cost half of that or even less, but definitely shouldn't be free because otherwise the musicians won't have any money. For us, it doesn't matter whether it's free for the user, as long as the uh, source is legal. So you've got advertisement supported services that's free for the user but it's not free from the creator. They get paid from that advertising income, so that's fair. In the giving music away is like part of business. You have to give your mu music away because you don't give it, you don't get noticed. I'm not doing this to make money. And even if I was doing this to make money, I wouldn't be pointing on digital sales for that money. So I'm hoping that by providing free, good music, it'll get around more and more and more people will share it to their friends. So producing music and releasing it, it's more like for promotion, not for to get money. Or... But the truth of course is, is that consumers will go to where they can get what they want the cheapest. Zero is zero, zero euro is the cheapest. Look, I mean, most of the great music has been recorded, cost a lot of money to record properly like big productions with orchestras, studios. If music is free, you, you will never be able again to create really good productions. So everything will become just things that people record in the living room with a computer. But I do think that it should be, it should cost something, just not way too expensive. For example, most live shows today, like Coldplay, and you know, the biggest acts of today, would cost here in Holland about an average of 100 euros per show. Now with 16 year old, nowadays in the middle of recession can afford a 100 euros show. Make it your business to facilitate what the consumer wants. At the moment, everybody is releasing music, so it is more like a quantity than quality these days. Everybody can set up their own small label, put it on Facebook, online, uh, and say, this is my release. I think that now it's really hard to live with one source. People have to start having more knowledge of more things at least at the start. It's not only just, like I said, producing. You have to be involved in scene, you have to play, you have to have your own label, you have to put your things online, let's say. You have to be handy with designing, producing, mastering. So you have to be more focused on the different things, I think. If you're making your own music, you need to be constant. That's the hardest thing, constantly making music, constantly trying your best, and constantly getting it out and promoting it. You need a lot of motivation, uh, you need a lot of discipline on yourself, and will, because sometimes you just maybe don't want to make music. 
if you want to remain in the industry and you want to keep on going forwards, you've got to. It's every morning on the bike, going to school, going to my work, and then having music with me, and then just, you know, <laughs> it keeps me from being like cranky all day. <laughs> just like the music in the morning, so I love it. I'm doing this not to make money, but just to see who does care. Take good care of the creator because, you know, that's where it starts. It's bringing us together, so music is the best diplomacy. Uh, you, you, you meet people from all around the world. It's a fun industry. I think we're in, in a really, really positive time in the whole music industry because it's expanding out and it's no longer being a music industry. The way it used to be in the past was fun. Kind of the way it is now is fun. I hope it will stay being fun for, <laughs> for the next generations. Mm -hmm.